you can see in the opening video, we constantly strive to make good on a simple promise. We go further so you can. It's our people who bring life into this promise through a culture of ingenuity and better ideas, a passion for service to our communities and helping others, a dedication to the principle that great vehicles and technologies must be available to many rather than a fortunate few. We are driven to make people's lives better by changing the way the world moves. This morning, we are going to talk about how we're doing that in both the auto and mobility sides of our expanding business. Well, let's start with our vehicles and the best-selling pickup truck in the world. It was here just three years ago that we showed you the all-new F-150 with breakthrough technology such as a 360-degree camera, best-in-class work capability, and a high-screen, military-grade aluminum alloy body. Now, some called it a risk, but we knew it was a better idea. And this kind of thinking has driven us to 40 straight years as America's favorite truck. And we're not stopping there, because our mission is to always go further. Today, we are proud to announce that Ranger is coming back to North America in 2019 with unique front styling, engines, and features. And production will begin late next year at our Michigan assembly plant. Ranger fans have spoken, and Ford is delivering. Now, I'm also personally very excited to share even more news with you. If you spend much time on car websites, you know there's a passionate group of people who want a modern version of one of the best known and best loved Ford Ford nameplates in automotive history. <laughs> In 2020. This is a no compromise mid size 4x4 utility for the thrill seekers who want freedom and off road functionality with the space and versatility of an SUV. And it too will be rebuilt right here at our Michigan Assembly Plant. It's capable of conquering everything from your daily commute to gravel roads and boulders. And of course, it's a name you've known and loved for decades. And Bronco is one of five all-new global utilities coming by 2020. Here to tell you more about Ford's commitment to product growth 
our Executive Vice President of Group of Global Product Development, Raj Nair. Well, the new Ranger and Bronco aren't the only new vehicles on the way. We're also rolling out 13 new electrified vehicles globally in the next five years. Our strategy is to use the benefits of electrification to make great vehicles even better. Whether we're talking about trucks, commercial vehicles, SUVs, or performance vehicles, in each case, electrification gives customers more of what they love. More capability for trucks, more productivity for commercial vehicles, more performance for sports cars, plus improved fuel economy on our most well-known and high-volume global vehicles. They include an F-150 hybrid with powerful towing capability and the ability to become a mobile generator on work sites. A Mustang hybrid with V8-like power and even more low-end torque make it even more fun to drive. Two new hybrid police vehicles, both of which will be pursuit rated a transit custom plug-in hybrid, helping reduce operating costs and navigate even the most congested streets in Europe. And an all-new, fully electric, small utility vehicle, delivering an estimated range of at least 300 miles. Plus, a high-volume, fully autonomous vehicle with no steering wheel, brakes, or gas pedal, coming in 2021 as a hybrid. We're going further by putting some of these vehicles on the road this year. We'll also be testing prototypes of Transit Connect hybrid taxis like this one in New York City and other major cities. Plus, we're kicking off a wireless charging pilot in the US and Europe with our Ford fleet. This wireless technology allows you to charge your car simply by parking over a charging pad. No cables or wires needed, so you'll never have to hassle with charging. Now, Ford is also committed to be a leader in autonomous vehicles. More than one million people die every year in vehicle accidents globally, and more than 90% of U.S. crashes are caused by human error. Autonomous vehicles can significantly reduce those fatalities, and that alone is a powerful motivator for us. But there's more to it. Autonomous vehicles provide the freedom of mobility to the elderly, people with disabilities, even children. So this year, we're expanding our testing in the U.S. and starting to test on European roads. Plus, we're introducing our next generation fusion hybrid autonomous development vehicle, which we revealed last week at CES and is now on our stand. This brings us another major step closer to high volume, fully autonomous vehicles in 2021. This progress and our commitment to autonomous vehicle leadership represents Ford at its best. When the first fully autonomous vehicle from Ford comes in 2021, it will not be for those who buy luxury vehicles. It will be an autonomous vehicle designed to serve millions of customers. It's the same commitment to bring technology to the masses and make their lives better that's defined us as a company for more than a century. being threatened. Global gridlock is going to stifle economic growth and our quality of life is going to be severely compromised. We need to respond to this challenge. Ladies and gentlemen, Bill Ford. You know, it was nearly six years ago that I gave that TED Talk, and it may have seemed radical at the time to call for such huge changes to our industry and to our business model. 
But I believe strongly that the auto industry was on the cusp of a revolution, the most significant one since the advent of the assembly line. We started our journey in earnest that day to become an auto and a mobility company. I spoke of cities becoming even more crowded within 20 years, and now an estimated three quarters of the world's population will live in just 30 cities. This is an issue that goes far beyond congestion. It's one that represents a massive challenge to mankind, one that affects our well-being, access to health care, clean drinking water, food, a safe place to live, and even the ability to find work. In fact, a recent study showed that commute time, a key part of mobility, is a critical factor in escaping poverty, more than other factors like crime or grade school test scores. And surprisingly, people living in the largest U.S. metro areas have fewer jobs in their, in their vicinity than they did 15 years ago. So to me, this has gone far beyond an inconvenience. It's affecting humanity and society. Within this confluence of factors, we have the chance to truly make people's lives better. It's both an exciting opportunity and a big responsibility. We have a vision of what our future should look like in all aspects of our business, and it's underpinned by a zero mentality for our vehicles and the facilities in which we build them. Through the use of advanced technology and mobility solutions, we're aiming to reduce vehicle crashes, traffic fatalities, and, in, and injury severity and help move them towards zero. And to use zero minerals in our vehicles that contribute to conflict. In our manufacturing plants, our goals include reducing drinkable water use to zero and helping deliver clean water to, to communities that need it and sending zero waste to landfills from our facilities around the world. These are the goals which are driving us into the future. My great-grandfather believed that companies existed first and foremost to serve society. And this is a belief that I share. But it must be reinterpreted to be relevant for each generation. And that's exactly what we're doing. And to take us there, I'd like to welcome our CEO, Mark Fields. <laughs> Thanks, Bill, and good morning, everybody. You know, if you think about it, just a year ago, we talked to you about our expansion to an auto and a mobility company. And we're doing this just as the world is moving from just owning vehicles to owning them and sharing them. And this year, the expansion of our business moves into an even higher gear. Now, as we gain revenue and customers that we previously didn't deserve, it's an enormous business opportunity for us. In fact, we expect extremely healthy 20% margins from this emerging part of our business going forward. And ultimately, our vision is to help make people's lives better by changing the way the world moves. Of course, with world-class vehicles, mobility services, and a wider range of transportation solutions. And we are off to a very strong start. We formed the Ford Smart Mobility, LLC. We're hiring new talent. We're doubling our presence in Silicon Valley. We're investing in mobility services. We've created the Ford Pass app. We're partnering with Motivate to launch Ford Go Bikes in San Francisco and acquiring San Francisco-based charity. Now, using Ford Transit vans, Chariot is an app-based crowdsourced shuttle service that actually adapts to customer demand, complementing mass transit, and providing transportation to the underserved areas. Now, since we purchased Chariot back in September, we've already expanded to Austin, Texas, with plans to grow to eight markets by the end of this year, including at least one market outside of the United States. And this is a bigger and a faster expansion plan than the one we laid out just a few months ago. Now, 
Chariot is just one of the ways that we're developing solutions that help people move more easily, whether they own a car or they don't. We're also at the same time aggressively developing dynamic shuttle, digital payments, ride security, fleet services, and a whole lot more. And core to our mobility work are cities around the world that are facing gridlock and pollution. And we know these cities need a partner to deliver mobility solutions. And Ford is deeply committed to being that partner. The Ford City Solutions team is the first from any automaker working with cities around the world to really conceptualize and then implement new ways of getting locals and visitors where they want to go. Whether it's via dynamic shuttles, or autonomous vehicles, or ride handling services, or bike sharing, or hey, all of the above. And to do this, we're working with some exceptional partners. We recently announced that we're partnering on mobility with Bloomberg Philanthropies. And I am really pleased this morning to be joined by Mike Bloomberg, founder of Bloomberg Philanthropies, and of course, the three-term mayor of New York City to report on our progress. So Mike, thank you so much for joining us this morning because we are really excited uh, to be working with you and also a coalition of mayors to improve mobility in cities around the world. So thanks for joining us. Mark, happy to be here, and you'll be happy to know I came to work today in my Lincoln SUV. Yes, I love it. <laughs> now, now, Mike, you and your team, uh, you saw the opportunity to engage mayors around the world on the topic of mobility a while ago, and in October, you announced an initiative to engage cities in planning for this future. So, can you tell us a little bit about this initiative and also why you did it? Well, it's done with the Aspen Institute. And what we're trying to do is to get information for cities about what's going on on the streets that they control. Uh, virtually every place, it's the cities, the city councils, the mayors that set the traffic regulations, the speeds, where you can turn, they build the roads, they put the signs up. And so they've got to get current with what new technologies are coming in and how it will affect traffic in their cities so that they can be ready when the need arises. Well, that's really, really unique and also very exciting. And at Ford, we are happy to be part of this public and this private partnership. So Mike, just tell us, what, is, uh, what does partnership bring to a project like this that you just laid out? Well, we have 10 cities, five that we announced before and five new ones. It's Austin, Buenos Aires, Los Angeles, Paris, Nashville, and we just added Helsinki, London, Sao Paulo, Tel Aviv, and Washington. And these cities, the mayors want to know what's going to happen with this technology. When will it be real? When it will be introduced? What are the safeguards? And how it's going to impact how people live. If, for example, you can get into your car and don't have to worry about touching the wheel, you can work or read or even sleep. And it may, in fact, make people use their automobiles more. If that's the case, the mayors have to get ready for more transportation. On the other hand, if it's used in a sharing sense, maybe there'll be less traffic. But what we do know is that technology is going to impact a lot of our lives, most parts of our lives, and this is certainly one where it's coming, and it's coming much faster than anybody had anticipated. Well, we certainly agree with that. And you know, what you laid out are really big challenges that we're facing. But of course, working together with pa passionate partners like you and your team, we uh, will really unlock a future that can only be imagined today. So. Mike, we appreciate you joining us this morning and also your leadership on this issue. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. And Bill, good to see you. Now, another partner and a thought leader on mobility is Walter Isaacson. And Walter is the president and the CEO of the Aspen Institute and is also well known for writing the biography on Steve Jobs. And we're proud to have Walter with us to have a very candid conversation about what more that we can do on mobility so that together we can create the city of tomorrow. So let's welcome to the stage, let's welcome him to the stage, and also let's welcome Bill back. Thank you for that kind introduction. It's great to be a 
partner, as you and Mike were just talking. Uh, we like this notion of a partnership of public, private, and communities working together to facilitate cities in this, what you call, a major revolutionary change that we're about to see. We're delighted to be working with you and Ford and Ford Motor Company on this issue, so let's get started with our questions here. Bill, you've called mobility a basic human right. Why, as we most of us think of it as a convenience, why do you call it that? Well, it's an inconvenience when you're stuck in traffic for half an hour. Uh, it becomes a human right if traffic literally can't move. And, and you know, we've all seen these examples of gridlock all around the world, which uh, are horrific. A lot of us travel and sit in them. Um, and when it starts to affect the most basic human needs, things like clean air, food delivery, health care delivery, poverty, um, people unable to get to where their jobs are, then it really does become, uh, I believe, a human rights issue. And I think it's really important, therefore, that we uh, take it from a world of technology and distill it down to the human impact. And what is the impact of the lack of mobility? Yeah, Mark, you've talked about what you've done in the past year uh, with mobility, expanding your business. What comes next? Well, overall, uh, even with all the progress that, that we've made today, it's, it's really important for any business to have one foot in today and one foot in tomorrow. And that's why we're spending so much time on the city of, city of tomorrow, because we see partnering with cities as, as a great opportunity for us. So as we look at, let's say, five years out, I'll call that the near term, for cities, we see the start of new infrastructure, things like wireless charging, uh, traffic management, uh, beginning to link vehicles together to the, the infrastructure. But also at the same time, we see far more sharing. We see a lot of that today, like our dynamic shuttle, whether it's bike sharing or ride hailing uh, and those type of things. And then for us at Ford, uh, we see one of the most dramatic changes actually in the vehicles themselves. More connectivity, more autonomy, more electrification, and very simply, that's why we're investing in these emerging opportunities. Uh, Bill, you have a history of seeing around corners. You're a visionary, but a visionary based on values. As you really push into the future, decades from now, what do you see as the long term? You know, Walter, you, you don't have to push decades from now. I mean, one thing that, that's true about technology is whatever we thought the time frame was, it keeps shrinking. And that's been true, really. Uh, you know, if we went back five years ago, uh, and we're trying to project out 15 years, that stuff is happening now. So uh, it's happening quickly, but I'll give you a quick synopsis. I think you know, uh, autonomous vehicles, for sure, uh, will be on the roads and running. And that should give us back green space in our cities, um, you know, less need for parking structures. Um, Mark mentioned a connected, connected vehicles, connected network. That will certainly happen. All forms of transport talking to each other. Wearables will become a very big thing for customers and a way to interact um, with the transportation system. Drones, of course, are, are coming. Uh, and you know, it's interesting. We're working at Ford with all these different forms, whether it's bicycles or we, we had some tests recently with drones off our F-150s. I mean, it's, these are starting to come together. And I suppose, you know, if you think about decades from now, you know, you think about things like flying autonomous vehicles. Well, and drones up my F-150, I like that as well. <laughs> Mark, does this mean uh, a time in our future when driving and owning my personal car sort of becomes a thing of the past? Absolutely not. Car, from our standpoint, cars and trucks are going to remain a very strong cornerstone of society. But we do think that you know the evolution, this evolution that we're talking about, and Bill was, was just describing, will really help cars and trucks not only be more effective, but also at the same time, it'll be more fun. But why such a focus on having you know partners working with others, even inviting others to your news conference in an auto show? Well, because we can't do it alone, and we shouldn't try. I mean, a lot. You know, this is a huge issue. Each city around the world has different infrastructures, different opportunities, different challenges in front of it. There won't be a silver bullet, one size won't fit all. But what we do need is we need the best and the brightest engaged in this. The, the best civic thinkers, the best entrepreneurs, and frankly the best employees within Ford Motor Company. We need to unleash all of this to make this, this world a reality. 
And, and Walter, to your point, that's why uh, we're not done with this discussion today. And to spark an even deeper conversation, I think we planned a pretty amazing day right here in Joe Lewis Arena. And we'd love and welcome for, for all of you to join us uh, in that. So to, to spell it out for you, we're convening a live, never before seen TED session about the future of transportation. Uh, next, together with the New York Times, we're welcoming the mayors of four major American cities on stage to discuss their view of the evolution of urban areas. And finally, and this is really cool, we're partnering with Vice and hosting a conversation with nearly 500 students about the future of the workforce uh, going forward. And so I think all of these events are themed around, as Bill mentioned, coming together to develop that city of tomorrow. And you know, because we're entering this new era of transportation, all of us at Ford are absolutely thrilled and excited to help build that future. So I want to thank you for joining us this morning, and please come on down. Great.